One of my friends recently appeared for a job interview. Everything was going well, and then the interviewer said, We'll now begin the Excel test, you have 20 minutes. My friend thought he was pretty good at Excel. If functions, pivot tables, even a bit of lookup here and there. But the moment the test started, everything changed. Under pressure, even the simplest things felt difficult. The ticking clock, the unfamiliar data set, the expectation to perform, it all added up. And that's when he realized. Knowing Excel and performing under interview pressure are two very different things. I've created a similar data set to show you the type of Excel questions often asked in job interviews. We'll go through them one by one, just like in a real test. And if you'd like to practice alongside me, the download link to the Excel file is given in the description below. Take your time, pause the video if you want to try solving it on your own first. Let's get started. Before starting the test, the interviewer might give you a few instructions like this. You have 20 minutes to complete the test. You may insert new columns or use helper formulas if needed. This is an open book test, feel free to look up any Excel functions. After the test, you'll have 15 minutes to walk the interviewer through your approach and solutions. Once you're ready, please begin by sharing your screen. Okay, so now let's begin with the first sheet of the Excel test. Here in this first tab, we have been given one dataset and some specific steps to follow. Let's begin with the first instruction. Change the sheet name to Customer Orders. Double-click on Sheet tab. And type Customer Orders. Next step is, wrap the text in all column headers, center align them, and adjust column widths to fit the content. First, select the column headers, using Ctrl, Shift, right arrow key. Then from the Home tab, click on Wrap Text. Then Center and Middle Alignment. Now select all the columns and double-click the column borders to autofit the content. Next step is add a new column called Order Month and extract the month name. For that, select Customer ID column and press Ctrl, Shift, plus sign to add a new column. Or just right-click and click on Insert. But using keyboard shortcuts often leaves a good impression in interviews. Type Order Month as the column header. To find the month name using a formula instead of entering it manually, start typing, is equals to text, and select the cell containing the order date. Comma, now in quotation mark, type M, for four times, to display the full month name. Close parenthesis and press Enter. Next instruction is, insert a row at the top, using keyboard shortcut. And type Customer Order Report merged across all columns. To insert a row at the top using a keyboard shortcut. First select the first row, then press Ctrl, Shift, plus sign. In the new row, type Customer Order Report. Next, select all the cells across the columns where your data exists, then click on Merge and Center from the Home tab to merge the title and center align it across the table. Let's simply bold the text and apply a fill color to the cell to make the title stand out. Next step is, apply a table format to the dataset. To convert the data into table format, select the dataset. Press Ctrl plus T, and it converts the data into table format. Next is, insert today's date in cell N1, so that it updates automatically each day. To enter today's date, we can use an Excel function. Type, today, open and close parenthesis, then press Enter. This will display the current date and update automatically each day. Next instruction is, type 0 in all blank cells in quantity ordered column but not manually, to fill all blank cells in the quantity ordered column with zero. First select the entire column, then press Ctrl plus G to open the Go to dialog. Click on Special, choose Blanks, and press OK. Now that all blank cells are selected, type zero and press Ctrl, enter to fill them all at once. Next is, create a new column priority. If units purchased more than 500, mark as high, else normal, using Excel function. Create a new column at the end and type priority as the column header. To determine the priority status, use the if function. Type if. Open parenthesis, select the units purchased cell. 
enter greater than 500, then a comma, high. Another comma, normal. Close the parenthesis and press enter. Next instruction is to calculate the number of days since the order was placed. Add another column next to the priority column and name it as day since order. Type is equals to, then select the cell with today's date and press F4 to lock it, type a minus sign, then select the order date cell. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to all rows. Last instruction is, protect the worksheet, but allow data entering in quantity ordered column. To do this, first select the quantity ordered column. Right click and choose format cells. Go to the protection tab and uncheck locked. Then, go to the review tab. Click protect sheet and type password. Now you can see that our worksheet is locked, but users can still enter values in the quantity ordered column as intended. Here we've completed our first task by following all 10 instructions step by step, from cleaning and formatting the data to applying formulas and protecting the worksheet. Let's move on to our next task. But before we continue, if you're finding this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And comment below, how much time did it take you to complete these 10 steps? Our next task is related to pivot tables. Using the provided dataset, create a pivot table with the following layout. Place sales representative in the rows. Place region in the columns. And calculate total sales. To create the pivot table, first select the entire dataset. Then, go to the Insert tab and click on Pivot Table. In the dialog box, choose Existing Worksheet and click on a blank cell where you want the pivot table to appear. Then press OK. Next, drag Sales Rep to the Rows area, Region to the Columns area, and Total Sales to the Values area. This layout will help you compare sales performance of each representative across different regions. Now that we've created the pivot table, we have some follow-up questions to answer based on this summary. Let's analyze the table and find the answers using simple observations and a bit of Excel logic. Our first question is which sales representative generated the highest total sales in the West region? To answer this, simply look at the West column in your pivot table and find the highest value. Then, check which sales rep that value corresponds to in the row labels. This tells you who performed best in the West region based on total sales. Charlie has performed the best in the West region. Next is who had the lowest total sales overall across all regions. Highlight using conditional formatting. Select the data, now go to Home tab and click on Conditional Formatting, go to Top slash Bottom Rules. Then select Bottom 10 Items. Change the number from 10 to 1, then click OK. This will highlight the lowest total sales value, and the corresponding sales rep will be your answer. Next is write NA in blank cells. If we try to type directly into a pivot table cell, Excel won't allow it. To display NA in blank cells, select any value cell in the pivot table, then right-click and choose Pivot Table Options. In the Layout and Format tab, look for the field labeled for empty cells show, type NA into the box, and click OK. Now all previously blank cells will display NA, making the table easier to read. Moving to our next task. Create bar of pie chart to visualize the distribution of sales by mode. Online versus in-store. The main pie should represent the two modes, online and in-store. And the bar section should break down the sales from in-store mode by individual products. Hints given. First, summarize total sales by mode and product. Second, only split the in-store section into its product-wise contribution. First, let's create two summary tables using pivot tables to prepare our bar of pie chart. First, let's create total sales by mode. Add mode to the rows area. Add total sales to the values area. This gives us a simple summary of online versus in-store sales. Next, total sales by products. Add product to the rows area. Add total sales to the values area. Then, drag mode into the filters area. Set the filter to in-store only. This way, we get product-wise sales, only for in-store mode, which we'll use as the breakdown in our chart. 
Now, copy the sales by mode pivot table and paste it as values in a new area. Next, remove the in-store row from that table, we'll be replacing it with a detailed breakdown. Then, copy the sales by product pivot table and again paste it as values just below the remaining mode data. This combined table will be the base for our bar of pie chart, where online will stay as a slice, and the in-store portion will be broken down into product level bars. Now, select the combined data table you just created. Go to the Insert tab, click on the Pie Chart drop-down, and select Bar of Pie Chart. This will display a pie chart where the online mode remains a single slice, and the in-store sales are broken down by product in the bar section. Now, right-click on the pie chart and select Format Data Series. In the Format Data Series pane, look for the option Split Series By. And choose Position. Then, adjust the values in second plot number to match the number of in-store product rows you included. This ensures that only the in-store products appear in the bar portion, while online remains as a separate slice in the main pie. Further, let's add data labels to make the chart easier to read. Click on the chart, then go to the Chart Elements button, or right-click and choose Add Data Labels, then More Data Label Options. In the Label Options pane, check both Category Name and Percentage. To separate them onto different lines, select New Line from the Separator drop-down. This way, each label will display the product or mode name along with its percentage in a clean, readable format. Change the chart title, Sales Distribution Breakdown. Now, let's organize the table for better clarity. Move all the in-store product rows, one row down, creating a blank row in between. In that blank row, type in-store to indicate that the following product rows represent a breakdown of in-store sales. This small adjustment improves the visual structure and makes the chart source data easier to understand at a glance. Now, change the overall color scheme of the chart to make it visually appealing. Click on the chart, go to the Chart Design tab, and choose a color theme that enhances readability. Next, click on the pie slice for in-store, and manually change its fill color to match the colors used for the in-store data label. We may delete this as well. This creates a consistent visual link between the in-store slice and its corresponding bar segments, making the chart more intuitive. Let's move to our next and final task. The question is from the given database. Calculate total units by state. Write a formula to calculate total units ordered for each state that can be dragged down. Also, calculate number of units ordered between 2022 and 2024 for each state. Let's first take a look at the dataset. In the first table, we have customer ID, order date, and number of units ordered. In the second table, we have customer ID and customer ID underscore state. We'll now use Excel functions to connect these tables and calculate the results efficiently. First, let's separate the state names from the customer ID underscore state column. As you can see, the last two letters represent the state code, like TX, ON, etc. To extract those two characters, use the write function. Type is equals to write, select the cell, comma, 2. 2 because we want to extract two letters from right side. Press enter and drag the formula down. Now we have a clean list of state names extracted from the full values. Now, as you can see, we have customer ID present in both tables. But they are not in the same order and do not align row by row. So, we can't directly copy the number of units ordered column next to the state names. Instead, we'll need to use a lookup function, like xlookup or vlookup to pull the correct number of units ordered for each customer based on the matching customer ID. Now, I'll use the xlookup function to pull the number of units ordered for each customer. Type xlookup, lookup value is customer ID. Lookup array is customer ID column in the orders table, press F4 to freeze. Return array, select number of units ordered column, again press F4, two times comma and press zero, close parenthesis and press enter. Now drag the formula down to populate the units ordered for all matching customer IDs. Now, let's solve the first question. Calculate total units ordered by state. First, we need a list of unique state names. 
To do that, type the unique function, select the state name list and press enter. Now you'll see a clean list of all unique states, ready for summary analysis. To find the units ordered by each state, use the SUMIF function. Type SUMIF. Select the state names column, press F4. Select the state name cell, comma, select the units ordered column, again press F4. Close parenthesis and press Enter. Drag the formula down to get the total units for all states in the list. Now let's double check to make sure we've captured the data correctly. First, compare the total sum of the statewise units with the overall total of the original units ordered column, they should match. Next, as an additional check, filter one state in the original dataset and manually check the sum of units ordered for that state. If both totals match, it confirms that our SUMIF formula is working correctly. Moving to our next question. Calculate the number of units ordered between 2022 and 2024 for each state. First, we need the order date for each customer. To do that, I'll use the same XLOOKUP formula we used earlier. Just copy the formula and paste it into the next column. Then simply change the return array from units ordered to order date. This will give us the corresponding order date for each customer. Now, type some ifs function, select units ordered column, press F4, select state name column, press F4. Select the state name cell. Now, select the date column, press F4, comma. In quotation mark, type greater than sign, January 1st, 2022, again comma. Again select the date column, press F4, in quotation mark, type less than December 31st, 2024. Close parenthesis and press enter. Drag the formula down. And here we have units ordered between 2022 and 2024. And that brings us to the end of our final task. We've covered everything from cleaning and formatting data, to building pivot tables, advanced charts like bar of pi, and using functions like xlookup, sumif, and you need to solve real interview-style Excel challenges. These are exactly the kind of practical skills that interviewers love to test, not just Excel knowledge, but how well you can apply it under pressure. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments, which question did you find the most tricky? Or tell me how fast you were able to solve the full test. Also, if you've ever faced any Excel-related question in an interview, drop it in the comments or send me via email. I'll create a video on it and share it with everyone, so we can all learn together. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Excel challenge.